conversation surrounding weight loss can be intimidating and the stigma around it can be even worse. I met with Dr. O'Keefe Simmons from Simmons Weight Loss to hear how they're making the conversations surrounding weight loss a little easier. Check it out. Dr. Simmons, welcome back to ISF. Thanks again for having me. Great to be back. We love having you and sharing all your knowledge on weight loss with us. <laughs> Thanks. Now, let's talk about obesity today. What are some factors of obesity? There are so many factors that contribute to obesity, and I think that's one of the things that providers need to ensure that they have a good understanding of when they're taking care of patients who come to them for weight loss. There are factors that are in patient's control. Those are environmental factors like if you're going to a grocery store which option are you making are you getting cake or are you going to get something that might be a bit of a healthier option but there are so many underlying factors that we don't talk about that we don't see that contribute to obesity the genetics the hormones some of the environmental factors are not things that necessarily are in a person's control in terms of what food is accessible and reachable based off of where they live so there are so many factors that contribute in addition to stress uh, sleep. There are just so many things. We could be here all day just talking about those factors. What are some of the treatment options that address obesity? So the treatment options are aimed at addressing some of those factors that we just mentioned, right? So we know that there are certain hormonal pathways and neuronal pathways in the brain and the intestines that are responsible for obesity. So when we're talking about some of these, these medications, for example, um, and the different procedures and surgeries that are available, a lot of them are aimed at addressing the hormones that are responsible for obesity. Another key that is addressed by some of the surgeries and the procedures is the amount of food that's eaten, right? So when we're talking about the surgeries and the endoscopic procedures, such as the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty, this is a non-surgical procedure that aims to reduce the size of the stomach. If your stomach is smaller, you're not physically going to be able to eat as much. So there is a volume component that is important, as well as you know the rate that your stomach is emptying and a bunch of other factors. But that's where these procedures and the medications come in to try to address some of those things that we may not be able to see um, that are contributing to obesity. Now, what is the length or how long do these patients have to be on these treatments to treat obesity? So I get asked this by so many of my patients. It's a very common question. And the fundamental concept that has to be understood is that obesity is a chronic or a long-term condition. And similar to high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, you may be on these medications to reduce your blood pressure, to control your blood sugar, and when you stop them, for many patients, the blood pressure is going back up. The sugar levels are going back up. And similarly with weight, the weight will go back up if you stop these medications. So really having that understanding that this is a long-term condition and we need to find solutions that address this for the long term whether that is with a non-surgical procedure rather whether that is with a medication there is going to need to be some long-term planning in terms of addressing obesity well for everything that you shared with us today on obesity where can we go for more information yeah so for more information you can visit our website www.simmonsweightloss.com Give us a call at our office, 305-204-8558, or visit us on Instagram at drweightloss305. Dr. Simmons, it's always great having you on ISF and learning so much from you <laughs> on everything weight loss. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me again.